OK, we are going to start talking about the architecture of SAS applications in general and uh, about some of the mechanisms in Rails specifically. And we're going to start with a architectural pattern, a way of structuring software called Model View Controller. So since we're trying to motivate all of this material with a question uh, of why would you care to learn about this stuff, the question for this segment is we've been talking about frameworks and the fact that they sort of uh, allow you to capture some of the commonality in different kinds of apps. So specifically for the SaaS apps we're building in this course, the question is, what is the common application structure, if there is any, in these interactive and user-facing apps that we're building that if we could capture them in a framework would somehow simplify app development? So that's what we're trying to capture here. And in order to do that, we're going to go back to our diagram. We already started up here. We looked at the client-server nature of web apps. We also looked at the fact that there's three tiers on the server side of a web app. And now we're going to dive into one of those tiers, into the app server. And we're going to see that Rails structures the app server as uh, being structured according to a design pattern called model view and controller. So what is that? The idea is if you have an application that is manipulating some data and interacts with users, that you can separate the organization and storage of the data, we call that part the model, from the user interface and the way the data is presented. And we call that part uh, the view. And what mediates the interaction between them is this intermediate thing called the controller. So when the user requests access to data, the controller is where the logic lives that mediates that access. And when the model wants to present that data that the user asked for, the controller mediates getting the data from the model and making it available for the user to see. So in our case, what we're going to see is that uh, the model can read and update data that's maintained by the application. There's indirectly that data is provided to the view, but it all happens through the controller. And the controller is also how the users who are looking at the view can interact with it. For example, in the case of the web, the view is a page you're viewing in a browser. And there's affordances on that page, like clicking on things and submitting forms and stuff like that. Now, if you think about this, it seems like this would be sort of an obvious way that you would structure web applications. Uh, but in fact, other alternatives are possible. And most web frameworks don't necessarily follow this pattern. Uh, so we'll come back to those in a minute, but very briefly to show uh, how model view controller apps work. Each entity has a model, a controller, and a set of views. So for example, in our hypothetical Rotten Potatoes app, which we're uh, going to be using to illustrate some of the things about how Rails works, there's a notion of movies. That, that's a kind of thing that the app manipulates. There's moviegoers. Uh, we have information about people who watch movies. We might even have information about reviews that people write about movies. So each one of those types of entities has its own model, its own controller, and its own set of views associated with it. Now, of course, there might be any relationships between them. For example, it doesn't really make sense to talk about a review unless you connect it to the moviegoer who wrote it and to the movie that it's about. So one of the things that you have to be able to do is make these associations among different kinds of models and reflect those associations when you're trying to collect and present data. So we'll show how that gets done as well. So when the user is uh, interoperating or interacting with an app like Rotten Potatoes, they will send requests for different kinds of data. Depending what the data is, the request will ultimately get handled by one of the several different controllers. And what we're going to show uh, in the next few segments is what machinery a framework like Rails gives you to help you create those mappings. Now I said, if you don't do model view controller, are there other ways to organize a web app? Well, one possibility is you could do a page controller. Page controller means pretty much every page the user could view has a controller associated with it. If you've got an app that just sort of does a few simple fixed actions, this might actually be an easier design. Uh, there's the front controller, which is actually the way that J2EE servlets work. There's basically one master dispatcher that everything comes through. And that gets, uh, there's logic that might talk to a bunch of different classes beyond that point. Um, but really, there's kind of one central bottleneck that makes these decisions and that makes data available for presentation through views. And if you've used PHP before, PHP is uh, an example of a pure template view application where there are different models, right? There's PHP code that manipulates data and, and talks to a database. But there's really just a collection of views that gets interspersed uh, with that model data. So the, the relationship is really between a bunch of models and a bunch of views, as opposed to model view controller, where each entity has each type of, uh, e each entity in the application has its own model, has its own set of views, and has its own controller that really just deals with that kind of thing. So the message here is that there's, architecture is all about making choices. And Rails chooses to support SaaS applications with model view controller because it turns out that's a really useful way to structure a large variety of SaaS applications. But it doesn't mean it's the only choice. And other architectures might be a better fit for other apps. So you know, at any time that we're making a choice in this course, we choose to use a particular framework, a particular set of tools. 
Almost always that means that we're giving up on some other choice. And although we're not going to cover all the choices in detail, it's important for you to understand that choices are being made and why these choices are being made the way they are.